Hello guys and welcome to a new video today by me Vulcan. Today we're going to be looking at the infantry on the NATO side and the infantry on the NATO side is probably their strongest thing so what I'm going to be doing is really telling you where their strength, strengths and weaknesses are and how to really make the most of using them. So let's get right into this. Now the first two units are the 2E Rep and the 2E Rep for Mass. These are two of the most popular recon infantries in the game. I personally use the 2E Rep purely for the fact that they cost 5 less. Now the reason for this is they may not have an AT like launcher like the Rep for Mass which only costs five more. However, the trouble is with using rocket launchers in anything like a recon unit and so, so on, it's kind of useless. Recons are normally in positions where you don't want the enemy to attack. Like, you would place a recon there so that you have forward information on whether or not the enemy is gonna attack that place. So, in a lot of cases, you won't want them to know that that's happened and therefore you won't be attacking them. So if you spend the 5 extra points to get the extra AT launcher you don't need, then it's kind of pointless. And that's what I'm trying to get out here. The 2E rep are 100 times better than the rep for mass, because what I normally do with my 2E rep is I actually turn off the SMG, the grenades, because then they won't attack anything without me wanting the them to and therefore they won't give away their position and because they're a very small unit in size they don't get spotted very easily and that means that they can be in positions that the enemy doesn't expect and doesn't know that you know that they're there and that's what these units are amazing for. The VAB that they come with is very good for getting them there quickly as well with its 90 km per hour speed. I'm not going to talk about the carriers that they come in too much unless it's relevant to the unit itself. So the 2E rep for mass, basically they come with a better rifle and an AT launcher, which is good, but it's it's not worth the points. That's basically what I'm trying to say here. You can also get them in a Puma, which is the French helicopter, also comes as a resupply helicopter in the logistics, but you'd only really need to use that. You can also get it for the other units as well with the MP40s. But yeah, you don't need to. Actually, that's not an MP40, it's a MAT-49. I'm not exactly sure what that is. But you don't need to. That's that's the thing. So anyway, the next unit is the HGM Dragon. This is the first HGM unit in the deck. And you can't get it. Honestly, the reason I haven't got it is purely because it has an accuracy of 4. The Dragons are terrible. The Dragon 2 only has an accuracy of 5. Now this is the same, I th believe, as the packed uh, AT gems on their infantry. They only have an accuracy of 5 as well. Vetted, they can be very, very useful. I'm not going to lie. But there are other units which are 100 times better for the same role. For example, the AT gem Milan F2 comes with 6 accuracy and much more AP power. You can see they c the AT gem Dragon has 5 accuracy and 11 AP power and the HGM Milan F2 has 6 accuracy and 15 AP power so that makes them a hundred times better. Now they do obviously cost more but the trouble is you're really really getting more bang for your buck if you buy the HGM Milan F2s. Now in a lot of cases you can get away with using the HGM Dragons with the M113s but the trouble is, again, you get more bang for your buck with the M2s and you can get them reasonably cheap in a VAB. So you're 35 for the, you're paying 25 for the Milan F2 squad and 10 for the APC. That's what the points mean on the right here. Basically it tells you your infantry cost on the left and the APC it comes with on the right. You can't get infantry on its own. Um, that would be awesome if you could, but in some ways it would be overpowered because then you wouldn't have to, the, the, the point balance wouldn't be very good. So anyway, you can get away with bringing them in APCs that only cost five, but I wouldn't recommend it. So basically with the infantry units, what I'm gonna try and do actually 
is really sort out their roles. So you've got the recon role. The 2E rep is the best for that role. The second one is the ATGM role. And the best ATGM unit that the um, that the NATO side have is the Milan F2. The dragons are good if you need cheap ATGMs and you can spam them out very quickly and get a lot of damage done. But the Milan F2 100 times more reliable. Now the BGS haven't used them before don't know if they're that good they're very similar to the 2e rep uh, but they cost five less but they come with a very slow apc and i think that's why i haven't bought them before it would be nice if you could get the bgs in the vabs and then it probably would be worth getting because they do have well I, th I think they're exactly the same actually so there's not much difference there because the cost would still be the same but basically because the APC that they come in is slower, it doesn't make them very good unless you're using them as defensive recon. Um, 2e rep are offensive recon, so that means that they're going to get in positions which are sort of past the enemy, whereas defensive recon are recon that you put on your lines so that you can see what's coming. That's what they would probably be good for. But you don't really want two of the same role on your deck, so I'd rather pick the 2e rep for mass because they're much more versatile. The HGM Milan F2, like I was talking about, before is the best HGM unit comes with six accuracy if you vet them they are even better and they are very very good with that APC as well they're very maneuverable and they can get around the battlefield very easily and outflank tanks very nicely now we're moving on to the chasseurs the chasseurs are the best rush infantry they only come with rifles now the rifles are actually quite good against infantry. You mustn't underestimate them, and because they are very cheap, they come with the five plus ten, um, ten being the VAB cost. It makes them a cost of fifteen. If you have two squads of these versus one squad of say chasseurs for mass, or maybe for instance Spadochronija on the enemy team, on packed that is, then it's likely you might win. Because actually the VABs are very powerful with their, with their M2 Browning machine guns. And with that fire support from those APCs, you can actually do a lot of damage with these weaker units. And that's what they're really good for. for piling these units against enemy infantry can do a lot of damage. And that's actually what lost me the Wargame Cup. Somebody did that to me. The chasseurs in the AMX 10P, I wouldn't really say is worth it you're not really getting anything that can really support that vehicle so it's kind of pointless and same again with the with the pumas now moving on to the chasseur for mass they have the assault rifles that really make these good these are amazing with their high accuracy and very fast fire rate and also the good thing about these is they come with a decent AT weapon so these are the sort of infantry you want to use against um, like light armor pushes which are supported by infantry they can take care of the infantry at range and they can also take care of the the vehicles that come with them the only trouble is they do suffer a lot against special forces with only a HE power of one and the HE power on infantry is something you have to be very very aware of some have one some have two and some have three you can't get infantry with HE power of four that's just overpowered but there are one, there is one unit on the pack side, Spetsnaz, that does come with a rocket launcher, which has a heat rocket, which does damage to infantry. I don't believe this one can. It's this one is a purely, even though it says it's a heat rocket, it's a purely an AT rocket. The one on the Spetsnaz is one that's like a fire rocket and like makes a bigger in, in, incendiary explosion when it blows up and does a lot of damage to infantry basically i would suggest you get them in the vab purely because they can handle themselves against um other apcs quite nicely so you don't really need that far extra fire support from the mx 10 p for example now moving on we've got the delta force this is the first special forces that i'm going to be talking about now you can see here special forces always have a he power of three you can see there, accuracy of 10 HP power of 3 is basically the same for most special forces. They also come with a 
and tank weapon with an accuracy of 10 and an AP power of 12. That's also very, very good. I, that's one of the best accuracies for an infantry unit on their AT weapon. Their grenade is also very good because they come with a concussion grenade. And basically what concussion grenade does, it instantly stuns the enemy as soon as they land. And they are very, very good for taking out multiple units, which, which a grenade lands in the radius of. So, basically, I would suggest you take them in the Huey if you're not going to push them too far up the map. If you want to get them really, really far, then I would suggest you take them in a Black Hawk. And the reason for that is because the Black Hawk has a speed of 350 kilometers per hour, which may, means you can really, really get it further up the map and into a place which can catch out the enemy. Whereas if you don't need to, then a Huey will do just fine with its 225 kilometers per hour speed. So it depends how you're using them. They also have all of the spe special forces have this small recon bonus of good optics. And that also makes them very good against infantry and forest because it allows them to spot the infantry before the enemy infantry spots them, giving them the, the first fight, really. The next thing is Fernspar. These are the German special forces. They are anti-infantry infantry. I've mentioned these before in maybe some of my other videos, but basically this is the equivalent of the Spetsnaz for the NATO side. And they come with extra grenades, basically. And they're very, very powerful against enemy infantry units. And they're also good recon units. They come with very good optics. So basically, if you're wanting to get into a place where you're not necessarily sure if there's going to be infantry, but you want to recon it, then these are good for that purpose. I used to have them on my deck a lot until I started preferring to use Delta Force. So it's really up to you what you need, to, what you need on your deck. Delta Force are the sort of infantry that are good against infantry, but... They're there to sort of catch out enemy armor. The Fernspar, however, are there purely to check out bushes where there might be other infantry. And then you can take them out with them. You can either get them in the Fuchs, which is the fastest APC in the game, or in the Dornier German helicopter, which is basically the same as a, a Huey but it's like a different, it's the German model of like a Huey basically. Um, they're completely a different aircraft, don't get me wrong, but they basically go the same speed on this game, so they're basically the same thing. And um, they feel the same role. So this is sort of like, if you want them to be manoeuvrable, you'll get a Dornier with them. But you don't need them to really be rushed up to anywhere. The Fuchs are good enough to get them anywhere you need them to be. And because it's just a Fuchs, they're quite small and they can get around the map nicely with their three wheels. So, yeah. Moving on to Fusiliers. One of my favourite units, but I don't use them enough. Is basically these are very cheap units which kind of match the Chasseur for mass. However, they do come in a worse vehicle for less price. So basically if you want to sacrifice a VAB for a Saracen then pick the Fusiliers because Fusiliers basically feel the same role. You can see they have the same accuracy and the same HG power. They have, a, they have actually a much worse AT weapon but they're very good for the for countering enemy pushes. They really really slow them down. If you want to get them with the Spartan that's a very fast APC that can really help out. Not as good as the VAB in terms of firepower, but can get people around very quickly. And you can also get the fusiliers in a Lynx AH-1 or a Lynx AH-7, which comes with rocket pods, which uh, can be great fire support depending on the situation. If you get them in the Saracens, they can be worth it. If you're in a forest heavy area and you don't necessarily need the speed, then using Saracens with fusiliers can be very, very good. However, using Chasseur for mass with VABs is just as good, I would say. So, you're paying five more to get like a VAB equivalent, which is a Spartan, it, but you're getting a worse AT weapon. So, overall, the Chasseur for mass are better in that case, but I do like the Fusiliers purely because they're British. And the Chasseur for mass and the Fusiliers both, pill, both fill the sort of medium infantry role. Light infantry is the stuff like recon I would say. Then you've got like the ones with specific roles like ATGMs and the AA 
and then you've got special forces and then you've got like medium infantry which are, I'll show you soon. Moving on to the green jackets these are similar again to the these are another set of recon infantry basically but they have a AT weapon and they have very good optics. They're okay some people like to use them because they can sort of handle themselves in the fight and if they do get caught out by enemy armor they can take them out but like I said before they basically w with a Spartan the green jackets basically fill exactly the same role as a T 2E rep for mass so and they're worse so it doesn't make them worth taking that is the only trouble with them you can see they basically have exactly the same armaments just worse AT so like I was saying before my argument was that if you're using them for recon you shouldn't need their armaments anyway they should be hidden and they should provide you with information moving on we've got high mat shoots and I haven't unlocked these guys purely because they're extremely cheap infantry basically throw away infantry you can bring them in for 10 points if you bring them in with an M113 GA1 but like again there's a slow APC that there's slow reactionary forces which you can just waste against the enemy if you really feel like it but honestly I don't see a use for them the Jaegers and Fooks now <laughs> honestly you you've got to take these they're very very cheap and you can get loads of them now yeah okay they're worse than the Shasta for mass in a lot of ways but they can really really handle themselves and when they come with a Fux which is slightly faster than the VAB you can really really use them to great effect to really outflank the enemy they're 15 kilometers faster than the VABs the Fux and having those ten, those troops the Jaegers that only cost 10 points in them you can get a lot of damage done they have basically uh, it's called a blinder side I, don't, I have no idea why it's called that but, but that's basically their AT weapon it can do a lot of damage at close range um, and with the Furks you can get them very close so that shouldn't really be a problem and they are one of the best infantry units I would definitely recommend taking them it's either you take the Jaegers with Furks or you take the Chasseur for mass it's just your choice but basically they fill the same role now we go on to the first of the AA infantry on the deck and we've got a lad blowpipe now these in little groups of four can do a lot of damage but honestly they're only really good for taking down aircraft that don't have much HP they aren't very good if you're gonna try and take down stuff like Apaches or um, Havocs they're just not gonna cut it really the blowpipe has a, only has an accuracy of 2 and a HP power of 3. The range is awful as well, so you've got to get right underneath them. They can come in Spartans, but what I would say the Saracens, or the blowpipes and Saracens are good for, they're good base defense, purely as a sort of making the enemy aware that you have something there. So you'll be sitting at your base with a lad blowpipe, and your lad blowpipe will fire at an enemy helicopter. The enemy helicopter can't necessarily see your blowpipe because it's a small unit and will therefore run away because it doesn't know what it's up against. That's basically it. They're, they're a, just a deterrent, a main base deterrent. That's what they're good for. And if you spam a lot of them near a, near a um, spawn point, you can do a serious amount of damage to any helicopter flying over. That's also what they're good for. Now the Lad Red Eye. This is an American AA unit uses uh, infrared sensors has an accuracy of 4 and HP power of 3 again HP power of 3 not good enough won't do enough damage to helicopters that HP power of 3 just basically means it's going to take off 3 health points off a helicopter helicopters don't have any armor so you don't have that to consider the amount the number that you see there is the number of damage it's going to do to the aircraft so you're going to need maybe 2 to 3 to even take or 2 to take out a gazelle cannon it's not good but however you can get them in Bradley M2s but again the M2 Bradleys it's it's hard to say do they really need that you should you shouldn't really be bringing in Bradley F uh, or M2 Bradleys if you're going to be using lad eye lad red eyes to protect them that's uh, not going to end very well however 
the best unit, the best AA unit, is the Lad Stinger. Now, the reason for that is that the Stinger missile actually has an accuracy of 8, and that's like twice as good as the Red Eye. And they only cost like 5 points more. Actually, I think it's. No, they cost 10 points more. If you bring them in in the M113s, you can get them into a reasonably good position, although the speed is extremely slow, so you're going to have to use fast move to get them where you want them. They are good for defense. That's what I would say infantry AA is good for. It's really good for defense. You don't want to use them with tank pushes or anything. You just want them there to really stop enemy helicopters getting behind your lines. If you want to support tanks, then you use a support unit like a um, a Roland or a Chaparral. But the Stinger is definitely the best AA infantry that you can get on NATO. Moving on to the Legion for mass as well. We've got basically two types of a very good unit. The Legion are very good for supporting chasseurs. If you're going to bring chasseurs, not chasseur for mass, but chasseurs, you should also have legion on your deck as well. And the reason being is they support each other very well. They both come with VABs, which are good support vehicles, but basically the legion come with extra HE power. So the legion can take care of the infantry while the chasseurs mainly focus on the armor if they have any. And that's what they're really good for. That's why they complement each other so well. The Legion also have their own AT missile, but as you can see, I think it has two less accuracy. Actually, no, it's the same. It's the same AT. So they just support each other because both units have AT. They work well together. While one has its rifles, can shoot from a distance, and the SMGs front of the Legion can do a lot of damage with the HE. So. Like I say, they complement each other and they only cost 20 points each. So if you're going to bring chasseurs, bring Legion as well. Legion for mass, basically have the for mass, which is upgraded and can do two HE power. And that's the Legion for mass costs 10 more though. The Legion costs five more than the chasseurs. And it's exactly the same as the chasseur for mass. But the Legion for mass costs 10 more than Chasseur for mass. And the reason for that is because their assault rifles are two, t or two more accurate and one more HE power. The AT missile is also much upgraded from the original unit. Also, coming with the VAB does help a lot. Now, Panzer Grenadiers, I believe these are the first infantry units you unlock um, as part of like the campaign. They're good. I would say they, they're good, but they're not great. They have an 80 gem, and they can be used very, very well with Marders. If you're going to use Panda Grenadiers, I would definitely recommend bringing them in with Marders. Marders are pretty awesome. I'll, I'll explain why when I come to the vehicles, but just bring them in with Marders. Marders are very good value for money, and they really do complement the Panzer Grenadiers well. Because the Panzer Grenadiers, if you have say a squad of four Panzer Grenadiers with Marders, you can use the HGMs to really do a lot of damage. Because I would say one out of four will always hit, roughly. The Marders, however, mean that they are well defended if anyone tries to attack you with infantry, for example. So somebody sees that you're using Panzer Grenadiers and they try and push some infantry towards you in APCs to try and counter you. Your Marders will tear those APCs to pieces and also the infantry once they're on the ground. And that's why they're very good. Also the Panzer Grenadiers have the HE power of 2, the medium infantry sort of tier, same as the Legion for Mass before. And that's, um, well, basically why they're so good. But honestly, people don't necessarily use the Panic Grenadiers very often because they cost a lot more than other infantry. And even though they have that HGM, it's only a Milan F1, not a Milan F2. And that one less accuracy can make them unfavorable compared to other HGMs. The next unit I'm going to be talking about 
is the paratroopers. Paratroopers are the infantry uh, version of the medium infantry and they do have their 2 HE power again. They have a worse AT weapon but then again they also cost 5 less than the than both the Panzer Grenadiers and the Legion for mass. Now if you're going to take the pa Legion for mass or the Panzer Grenadiers I would definitely recommend the Panzer Grenadiers over the Legion for mass. But the trouble is what you're paying the extra 10 for on the Panzer Grenadiers is that ATGM and that's really not what you need. The paratroopers however only cost 25 and that's because you get a worse APC with them. However if you're going to use them to sweep through a uh, a forest then that's not much of a problem because you can drop them off at the end of the forest and then push the paratroopers through and they will take care of most things pretty easily and I do love these units they are very very good now moving on to the rangers these are another unit which are medium infantry and they come with a red eye sam which has one less HE power than the stinger uh, but they are also good because they are recon infantry the only trouble with them is you can't really get them in a cheap vehicle Rangers are all very well, but you can't get them in an APC. You can either get them, well, you can get them in the infantry support vehicle or infantry fighting vehicle, which is the M2 Bradley, but you can't get them in an APC, which is unfortunate because that would make them worth getting as recon infantry because recon infantry is good if it has an AA weapon. It can really catch out enemy helicopters, especially recon helicopters, which are weak. And um, yeah, that's what it would be good for. Otherwise, I wouldn't recommend having any of the weapons on recon infantry. But yeah, you can bring them in the Hueys. Sometimes you could bring them in. I don't often. You can see I haven't even un I haven't unlocked the Chinook version of them because you don't need the Chinook <laughs> version. You either bring them in Hueys or you bring them in Bradleys. But again, I wouldn't recommend them. They're not great. I would much rather have a Stinger squad than a ranger squad. Now moving on to the next ones we have the riflemen. These are low infantry again, these are light infantry, they only have an HE power of 1 and only an accuracy of 6, they have a crap AT weapon and they come in M113s. Not really much else I need to say because they come in a slow APC, have a bad assault rifle, bad AT weapon you're not going to do very well with them. However, they do do well if you bring them in with Bradleys. They can be very good support infantry for Bradleys if you're going to decide to push into any forest and you're not sure if there's any infantry that needs clearing. That can be useful, but honestly, I wouldn't waste the points for those extra riflemen. Now next we've got the sappers. This is the flame unit for the NATO side. I think the pack side actually has a couple of versions of flame units. But basically flame units are weak. They are very small squads. They only have about five men in them. They have rifles as their main weapons but they also have fl flamethrowers. And the flamethrowers are good for, well, taking out any enemy infantry but they need to be supported by other infantry. You can't just send a group of sappers into a, into, a, um, into a forest and expect them to come out alive. They will get eaten before they can even get their flamethrower firing if you send them in on their own. They come with a VAB which will get them anywhere really reasonably quickly. They're very situational but you, as I say you definitely need to support them. They're really really good in a case that you're using an infantry bus and say you have legion and chasseurs in front of them and then you bring up a sapeur squad in the back and then spray down all of their infantry while they're not looking they're like where the fuck where did all this flame come from yeah that's what they're good for now moving on to the last one today we've got the SAS oh yeah honestly I was a bit disappointed when I saw the SAS in this why do they have an AA missile seriously they have that extra HE power, like I said before, all special forces have the extra HP, HE power and the good optics. But 
this AA. It's it's terrible. A six accuracy and three HE power is not good enough. This flashbang basically has the same role as the um, concussion grenade that the Delta Force have and stuns enemy infantry. They come in Lynx or Lynx AH1. This Lynx AH1 can actually be very useful if you need it, but basically SAS, what they're good for is getting into positions to catch out enemy recon helicopters. That's probably their biggest role. You don't want anything well, armoured getting in their way, otherwise they will just lose. And yeah, that's about it guys. So that's basically all of the infantry units. I hope this has been useful. The best recon unit, 2E rep, by far. Best ATGM unit on the NATO side is the ATGM Milan F2. The best special forces unit is up to you. It's either the Delta Force or the Fernspar. The Fernspar being the ones that can take out infantry and the Delta Force being the ones that can catch out enemy armor. The best light infantry is probably the Chasseur for mass. The best rush infantry are the Legion and the Chasseurs. And the best heavy or best medium infantry is either the Panzer Grenadiers or the Paratroopers, depending on what you need them for. Do you need extra AT gems or do you need extra, well, AT or you maybe you just don't need that extra thing and you just want to spend less money. And then finally, the, the best well the best special forces I think I already mentioned yeah the best the best AA is the stinger and I think that's about it and the supper is kind of in a world of its own so yeah it's up to you if you want to bring them in but I hope this has been useful guys that's a overview of the NATO infantry sorry it really took a while but I really wanted to sort of break them up for you watch out for the HE power of 1, 2 and 3 if you're looking through the armory tell you whether they're light medium or have or basically special forces um but yeah thanks for watching guys if you have any questions please leave them in the comments and i'll see you in the next one guys goodbye